when I when I started out, people were like, you know, you never make money until after your fifth year, mm -hmm. so you know, just hang in there. And I was like depressed as soon as I heard that. But right. um, you know, it's not like we made tons of money in the beginning, mm -hmm. but um, enough to reinvest and to continue going. How do you spot a niche in a huge market and exploit it? In just a few short years, Chris Pagula has turned a new father's identity crisis into Diaper Dude, a baby product line sold by Target, Neiman Marcus, and Amazon.com. Chris Pagula, welcome to Dog and Pony. Thank you for having me. All right, we're going to start off with a little segment we call Once Around the Track. Okay. That's where I ask you a series of questions. You give me quick answers. We'll do as many as we can in 30 seconds. Gotcha. <clears throat> where did you grow up? Outside of Scranton, Pennsylvania. What was your first job? My first job was retail at a uh, clothing store. How long did it last? Uh, a month. How old is Diaper Dude, the company? We are just finishing our fourth year. How old were you when you designed your first thing? 28. Did you design clothing and or accessories uh, before you started Diaper Dude? Not at all. How many employees do you have at Diaper Dude? Three. How many children do you have? Three. <laughs> are they your employees? <laughs> they are. <laughs> no, they're not. Who's your biggest distributor? The Red Envelope. Do you make the rules or do you break the rules? Uh, rules are made to be broken. <laughs> are you obsessive or do you procrastinate? Oh, total obsessive. How many hours a week do you work? I work probably 40 to 50 hours at least a week. What superpower do you wish you had? I wish I could see the future. Nice. Yes. You've been once around the track. Yes. All right, so how did you come up with Diaper Dude? You've got to tell us a story. Uh, well, actually, I credit my wife to the uh, being the inspiration because mm -hmm. when we were pregnant with our first child, she came home one day with dozens of diaper bags mm -hmm. that were for her. And right. they were great, but they were too flowery. And I pretty much said, where's my bag? And she said, take your pick. And I pretty much laughed and said, I would need something for myself and started on the quest for my own diaper bag. Because you're not secure enough to carry a pink diaper bag. <laughs> I'm very insecure. A great business was born. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so, the, what, so you wanted a new aesthetic, you wanted a masculine feel for a bag. Yeah, I wanted something that was functional, that looked cool, that was hip, and didn't look like a diaper bag. And everything else out there that I researched basically didn't um, fulfill those needs for me. Okay, so yeah. you had no real relevant business experience, you had no design experience. Nothing. How no. did you start? Where did you know to begin? You know, actually, I looked for a, a bunch of different bags that were out there um, to try and get a gauge on what was being sold now. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very much into messenger style bags, and I just pretty much put together a, com a combination of, of all different types of bags, all different features that I liked from different bags. Mm -hmm. um, not reinventing the wheel, pretty much. And um, I found a sample maker, had a a sample made, and um, before I knew it, we were producing overseas. And who was your first customer? Fred Siegel, Life Size Kids. Not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really interesting. Just called them up and said, I have this product, this is what it is, and they said, come in next week, and mm -hmm. pretty much um, went on from there. Okay, so you start out there, then where do you, how do you, how do you start to plan out who you're going to next? You know, I pretty much um, walked around the blocks, seriously. <laughs> I just found stores that I thought we would fit into, uh -huh. and I just walked in, and I said, hey, this is my product, what do you think? And um, pretty much people were biting on it and wow. wanting to get it in there. And um, then I had friends who were um, actors or agents, and they had, um, celebrity friends that we were giving the product to, so we started getting on that whole, um, in, in that whole market of having celebrities being attached to the product as well. And who's the biggest celebrity that you've, that we've seen, <clears> that we've <throat> witnessed, that's been documented using that the That has been dude? documented using it. Well, there's a bunch that have been documented in a lot of, of the trade papers or, or in like Us Weekly and such. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, Angelina Jolie purchasing it apparently mm -hmm. for Brad Pitt. Uh, right. Tom Cruise Registry had our bag on and apparently was purchased. Um, even uh, women are carrying our product like um, uh, Mir Sorvino was right. photographed with it and uh, toy spelling. Now is there a diaper dude for her? There is actually. We do have a line of diaper bags for women called Diaper Diva. Ah, nice. Yes, nice. yes, Diaper Perfect. Diva. All right, so now you're distributed in a bunch of stores, including yes. Neiman Marcus and yes. Target. Pretty diverse distribution right. there. Yeah, yeah, we are across the board in a number of boutiques. I think we have a total of almost 700 stores that we sell to wow, right now. Crazy. And we're overseas as well. So what's the most, what was the hardest thing about starting your own business? The hardest thing was um, going into my office every day when I received my first load of 4,000 bags and figuring out how the hell I'm going to get rid of them. <laughs> um, How'd you pay for all those bags? <laughs> I uh, invested part of my own money and then got a loan from my in-laws. So 
pretty much started off uh, the whole business with uh, about a $36,000 investment. And are you guys making money now? Uh, oddly enough, we've been making from the beginning. And so that's like <laughs> that's the good thing. That's such a crazy yeah, concept. No, it wow. is. Well, but when I, when I started out, people were like, you know, you never make money until after your fifth year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just hang in there. And I was like depressed as soon as I heard that. But, right. um, you know, it's not like we made tons of money in the beginning, mm -hmm. but um, enough to reinvest and to continue going. So, and unfortunately, you get taxed on it. So, <laughs> I tell you. Where do you manufacture? <clears throat> we manufacture um, overseas in China. Okay. Yes. What are the pros and cons of doing that? Um, the pros are being able to have our product at a price point that everyone can afford. And that was mostly um, the thought behind starting the product. Uh, the cons is that there's dealing with delays, production mm -hmm. issues, if there um, are any quality issues, if there are any. So it's a whole other world, less control that you feel like you're giving up. All right, Chris, now it's time for a segment we call None of Your Business. That's when I ask you impolite questions to which you can either answer or tell me none of my business. Okay. Ready? Yep. Who is the most obnoxious woman on The View? <laughs> uh, well, it was Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> okay. Which store negotiates the hardest? I'd have to say um, Babies Are Us. Babies Are Us? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. It's the jersey in them. Yes, exactly. Uh, which bag does Brad Pitt have? A black dragon. The black dragon? Yes. Sweet. Yeah. Is Diaper Dude an effective tool for cruising single moms? It's a total park? chick magnet. Total chick yes, magnet. Yes, absolutely. Oh, you're from Scranton. What yes. do you think of The Office? <laughs> it's my favorite show. Is it really? All they're missing is an accent. <laughs> really? Yes, the local accent for Scranton people. All right. Anything you want to promote before you take off? Uh, Diaperdude.com. All the Check good stuff's there. That's where you can find it all. All right. Chris Pagula, founder of Diaper Dude. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for having me. And as always, if you've got comments, questions, or suggestions for upcoming guests, you can email me, Paul Ollinger, at paul at dogandpony.com. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Dog and pony, dog and pony.